Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this little Denon Hi-Fi system. Um, it's a DRA F109 DAB. Um, now one of the problems with modern Hi-Fi equipment is um, if you haven't got the service manual you, you're absolutely stuffed. You've very very little chance of finding a fault without the service manual. Um, so we'll just plug it in and uh, see what the fault is and then I'll explain why the service manual is so important on uh, modern hi-fi equipment right so here we go plug it in uh, it's completely dead and then after a short pause um, we've got flashing light on the front so the actual power supply, um, the connectors are here, I don't know if you can see it down there, they're all marked, the first one CPU 5 volt, uh, that's the first thing we need to measure there. And as you can see we've got 5.19 volts. Uh, now all these other um, pins here are all, if I tap onto another one, they're all completely dead. Um, also the amplifier supply, the high power what is it 31 32 volts on there um, that's all got no voltage on either um, so without the service manual that's all you can do now um, and the reason is with a lot of hi-fi equipment when something goes wrong um, it switches into a safe mode it switches off um, and it just won't do anything no matter what you do this won't do anything and that's why it's so important you need the service manual um, because what we've got to do is we've got to put this into the um, into the uh, service menu uh, and it should tell us on the front there what the problem is uh, and in some circumstances um, some rails will be powered up so we can make additional measurements um, so let's get the service manual first Right, so I've got the service manual here, and that tells me to um, enter the um, service menu. We press the power and you press the preset recall, hold them both down while you plug it in the mains uh, and it should tell us on the front then what the problem is. Right, so I'll just set the camera up in front of it. I'll just um, unplug it to reset it and then it says you hold that down and that down and we power up at the same time right now it's come on and it says there protection power um, so there's a fault on the power supply that's actually uh, shut this thing down um, but you can't do anything with it until you cancel this protection um, so even if you find the fault um, by accident without a service manual um, it still won't work because you've got to cancel this error out of the memory before you can go any further um, so now that should enable us um, to check all these power rails are correct because it's like in a, a safe mode now right so now I think I see what the problem might be uh, I've clipped onto the plus 12 volt rail there and we've only got 9.27 and if we measure the uh, minus 12 volt rail uh, we've only got 10.3 volts uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that connected like that we're measuring the voltage and I'm just going to unplug it which will cancel the service mode um, and then it should make the power supply dead again uh, that should drop back down to zero uh, and not come back on when we try and repower up. So let's just unplug it first, like that. Yeah, that rail's dropped down. Now plug it back in. Uh, wait till it starts flashing. Yeah, it's in protect. And as you can see, that rail now has gone completely dead. Um, so without a service manual that tells you how to get into the service mode you wouldn't have a hope in hell of fixing this uh, because this isn't going to work even when we fix the fault until we cancel this error protection error out of the memory um, now there appears to be three different power supplies here so I'm going to stop the camera and study the manual um, with uh, a plus and a minus rail both been low you would have thought that the 
possibility uh, of two capacitors on the secondary is very slim I would imagine we're looking at a primary side uh, problem here but anyway I'm going to stop the camera now and study the service manual right so if it was a capacitor on the primary side it's more likely to be that one uh, but what I'm going to do is we're going to move over here to the plus, plus 12 and minus 12 volt rails I'm going to check these four capacitors here um, and see where we go from there but it is um, a pretty simple power supply um, I don't think we'll need a new board it shouldn't be uh, too difficult to repair this right now unusually um, these capacitors all check out all right so um, and the other suspect on the primary is this one here that also checks out all right so what we need to know now is what voltage is on pin 8 of that chip uh, and it's switched through there and it comes from a line P V C C so we need to find the source of that first and then I'll uh, I'll download the data sheet for this chip and we'll check what the uh, minimum supply for correct operation should be there right so here's the data sheet for the switch mode power supply uh, chopper control IC uh, and we're looking at a typical supply voltage of 13.5 uh, the minimum of 10.3 for it to start so we need to check that first right, now of course you have to measure this voltage with the uh, in the service mode otherwise the power supply will be dead uh, but we got 13.88 volts there um, so that is not the source of the problem right so um, just before we move on I'm measuring here the main amplifier output rail I presume it's a class D chip under there and if you look we've got 31.93 volts so let's just call that 32 volts for the main amplifier uh, and this is where it gets really strange and uh, it's nearly time to go home I've had a stressful day um, I'm going to come back to this on Monday when I thought about it but let's just have a look why this is strange 32 volts on the amplifier supply Right, so if you look at this, all these supplies are coming off one transformer driven by one IC. Uh, so the main high current rail for the amplifier, 32 volts, that is absolutely correct. Uh, the rails we've got faulty are these, I've actually measured these three now and they're all wrong. Uh, the 12 volt output from that 12 volt regulator, uh, we've only got 12.42 volts in. So that's not enough overhead for the regulator to work. So I'm assuming we're going to have probably 14 or 15 volts here. Um, and on the plus 12 volt rail here, I've only got 9.3 volts. And on the minus 12 volt rail, uh, I've only got 10.3. Uh, but how strange is that? Um, these three rails are wrong. This rail's right. And they're all coming from the same transformer. Yeah, so I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to leave this till next week and come back to it. Very strange that. Right, so it's Monday morning now. I've spent half the morning actually looking at this power supply. I cannot see any problem whatsoever. Um, why the power supply has got a low output but I've actually downloaded the data sheet for that IC there uh, and it tells me that the IC can run in a low uh, load mode uh, now I'm wondering if these outputs are actually wrong um, because we don't have any loading on the main rail um, because we don't have any speakers connected so all this time I've spent looking at this power supply because the rails are wrong might just be a red herring um, the actual switch mode controller might be throttling back the power supply because there's not enough load on it uh, so what I'm going to do now um, I can't see any problem with that I'm going to connect a pair of speakers to it and we're going to cancel the protection mode and then see what happens right so that's a pair of speakers connected um, let's just start this in the service mode
Right, and then I've just got to have a quick look at the service manual and see how we cancel this. Right, so it says to uh, disable the protection history, we just hold the preset call button down for five seconds. And there we go, that's protection cleared. Right, let's see what it does now then. Right, so that's not actually um, altered any voltage on the power supply, that's the minus 12 volt rail, that's still showing as low. Um, I'm just going to turn this off at the mains, turn it back on again and then um, if it doesn't go immediately back into protect uh, we'll put some music through and see what happens. Right, so I've actually decided we're not going to play music, we're going to play this uh, focus CD for CD players. Uh, it's just a 1K sine wave uh, and then we don't get any problems with YouTube, uh, copyrights, using other people's music. So. Uh, it's powered up now, um, I've got this playing, that's the minus 12 volt rail we're still monitoring and uh, look at this. Uh, that's, that's your 1k um, sound from both speakers, it's working absolutely fine. Um, now look what I've just um, discovered on here. Um, I, it was as I thought the power supply is in sort of um, some low power mode because the more you turn the volume up the more the rail rises up so that's the minus 12 I'll just turn the speakers around then we'll turn this up a bit right, so I'll just turn the speakers around so it doesn't deafen me let's get in the camera and turn this up and watch this this is the minus 12 volt rail And when you turn the sound back down, it drops down to 10.38. Um, so the rails rise up with the amount of volume. So what a waste of time that's been. Why doesn't it say in the manual that the power supply rails rise with the amount of volume? So back to the service manual, um, if you look at that, plus 12, minus 12, no mention there that these rails are actually variable depending on the volume level. So guys and girls on YouTube, lesson learnt. Um, and we still don't know why this has actually tripped out in the first place because it's running absolutely fine. Um, it said power fault, uh, the, no reference, if it was a fault with the uh, amplifier, it would say uh, amplifier protection. So obviously whatever was wrong with this, um, it was a power supply that tripped it, but uh, it's running absolutely fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is set it up on a bench and just uh, run it for an hour or so, and then uh, just have to send it back. Um, but uh, anyway, hopefully... Um, viewers on YouTube won't make the mistake I've made um, of trying to look why the rails appear to be low. Alright guys and girls on YouTube, I'll catch you in the next video. Many thanks for watching, goodbye.